similar issues as do other counties up and down the state. I think here locally, we know that we are providing mental health and alcohol and drug services in the jail. We're providing outside and inside the jail. And a lot of times it's the same clients that we're dealing with and we know that recidivism is high. And also the recidivism rate doesn't seem to be going down because we're providing more alcohol and drug and mental health services inside the jail. So not only in this county, but others, and particularly this collective that we're working with, we're looking at best practices for criminal justice and how do we keep people out of the jails. And the key point here is prevention, that we have more models around prevention, also for mental health services, alcohol, drugs, public health, that we really deal with prevention. And so I'm hoping that as we move forward with our integration efforts that we will have opportunities to work closer with the sheriff within the jail system to really look at those best practices. Discharge planning is a big one. Your pre-release planning your, is, is critical. And while we have some efforts, we need more efforts in this county. So as we come back and report on the integration efforts, we can also share with you what we're doing with criminal justice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a couple comments in regards to uh, uh, the report by Ms. Mannix, the chair of the Mental Health Board. Uh, towards the end of the report, it states that on a positive note, some staff feel that mental health clients may be less stigmatized when they are associated with social services. I believe that too. You know, um, even just the setting sometimes brings the stigmatism. So that change in setting, I think, is going to be a very positive thing. The uh, Professional Standards Committee, I think, is a great idea to make sure that the standards aren't lessened. Um, and the third item, the uh, bringing home the clients from out-of-county placement has been one of my priorities for a long time. The family involvement with the person is critical, I believe, to their recovery. And the... the the closer we get the patient to that family is the answer, not getting the family to the patient. Um, it's going to take some time. It's going to take a change in the mindset of communities and individuals to say, no more, not in my backyard. Mental health situations affect families across the board. There's no economical. There's no social background setting. It affects everybody. And the family, I believe, is integral in their recovery. Um, so I certainly agree with this statement. Um, it would be great uh, if we were in uh, uh, some type of a setting to provide for that instantaneously. It's not going to happen. It's, it's going to be a long-term type of a turnover. It's going to be a paradigm shift to get these folks from saying, not in my community, not in my neighborhood, not in my block. But um, it, it's, it's something that I believe has to take place. And I, I thank you for putting it in the report, and I wholeheartedly back that up. And uh, uh, I, too, thank you for all the work that you do. And uh, um, it's one of those things that does have that unfortunate stigmatism uh, that people don't realize it can affect anybody. So uh, uh, I, I appreciate all your work. Supervisor. Thank you. I, I also want to thank the volunteers here today because this, uh, this is a report that comes from the mental health um, uh, board and you're all volunteers and it's difficult work and I want to thank you for all the time you put into it. It's really, really challenging and, and you come to the board from different, uh, pers you have different perspectives and bring different things to, to uh, to the mental health board and I, I just want to thank you for doing that I see faces from the coast and it's quite a distance to travel here and it's a commitment to be on a board like this so I want to thank you for your service thank you any additional comments from the board um, comments from the public in regards to uh, the annual report okay seeing no one step forward um, uh, I'll show acceptance of this report unless uh, I'm directed it needs a motion to accept Okay, I, I believe it's just an acceptance of the annual report. So we'll show that accepted. And uh, again, thank you very much for all your hard work in today's presentation. I believe we have one last proclamation. And uh, that is item 7E, discussion of possible action, including adoption of a proclamation 
recognizing May 19th as World Hepatitis Awareness Day in Mendocino County. And uh, I will read the proclamation and then if someone would be so kind as to make the motion to accept. Um, this is a proclamation on the Mendocino County Board of Supervisors recognizing May 19th, 2008 as World Hepatitis Awareness Day in Mendocino County. Whereas over 520 million people worldwide are chronically infected with viral hepatitis, over 5 million people in the United States are infected with hepatitis C and 1.5 million with hepatitis B. And in Mendocino County, hepatitis C is the fastest growing infectious disease with 630 new cases reported between 2003 and 2007. And whereas hepatitis can lead to liver disease, cirrhosis, liver cancer, liver failure, and death. And whereas many people at risk or infected by these conditions are neither tested nor treated due to a lack of public awareness about hepatitis and a lack of access to care, and thus can, cannot promote their liver's health or prevent the unknowing spread of viral hepatitis. And whereas many persons at risk or infected by these conditions are neither tested nor treated due to a lack of public awareness about hepatitis and a lack of access to care and thus cannot promote their livers. Hmm, I just read that. I'm sorry. Um. <laughs> Seeing your moment there, I guess. <laughs> Liver's health or prevent the unknowing spread of hepat uh, viral hepatitis. And whereas hepatitis awareness education campaigns, accessible screening for hepatitis C and hepatitis B, along with appropriate care, can reduce the damage from hepatitis C and B viral infection to individuals and to our community, financially as well as physically and emotionally. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Supervisors of Mendocino County hereby proclaims May 19, 2008 as World Hepatitis Awareness Day in Mendocino County. Assign this date by myself, uh, Chair of Mendocino County Board of Supervisors. Second. So first I need a motion. I can't make so the moved. motion. So moved. Second. And it is seconded. Um, any discussion to the proclamation? Okay. Um, hearing none, um, call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes unanimously. Hello, my name is Stacy Cryer. I'm the Public Health Branch Director for the Health and Human Services Agency, and I'd like to introduce Libby from McCabin to say a few words. Hi, um, my name is Libby Guthrie, and I'm the Client Services Director at McCabin here in Mendocino County. And you basically did run through the things that I was going to say because a lot of the material was taken directly from the proclamation. I just wanted to say that Governor Schwarzenegger already signed a proclamation for the state of California, so it's just fitting that Mendocino County do so as well. Um, we're hoping that the increased awareness through education campaigns and accessible screenings and that this will help for appropriate follow-up and care here in our county. And we are very, very concerned that we reduce the damage from viral hepatitis to individuals and the entire community, um, physically, emotionally, and financially. We believe that hepatitis C in this community and hepatitis worldwide is um, 